a lawyer, but I was not a public defender, and I didn't really know anything about public defenders. Um, I, mean, I mean, I knew very little. And I was introduced to Jonathan Rapping, who used to be the trainer for public defenders in the DC Public Defender Service. Um, and he's this very energetic, high-spirited guy, and he invited me to um, Alabama to uh, film his new class of young public defenders. So um, I flew down there in July of 2009, and what he does is a training and mentoring program. So um, I got down there, I didn't know what to expect, I didn't know what the students would be doing, and when I saw them, I mean it was right away, I thought what they're doing is just so um, unique and so important and um, it kind of hit me at a lot of different levels. I thought um, young people don't get a lot of respect. Um, they certainly don't have a lot of um, a reputation for being socially active and socially conscious. Um, and these young people were so smart and dedicated and capable. They could do anything and they were they were talking about poor people and about justice. And I just thought that was interesting. And then as a lawyer, I thought, they're so happy. <laughs> these lawyers are, they're so consumed by what they do and they have such a goal of doing it well. And so really I just started with, I want to figure out why are they so happy? <laughs> why would anybody want to do this really hard job? And, um, and then from there it evolved to, if you're a public defender that wants to do a good job, what is that like for you? We all know about bad public defenders, but what if you want to do a good job? What, what is it like? I started out thinking I would follow Gideon's Promise, which was a really unique teaching model. Um, they bring people together for two weeks for like a lawyer boot camp, but it's also a mentoring program. But then I started thinking, as much as I love the training program, it's really the lawyers that are the heart of the story. You need to understand what they're actually facing to understand why they need the training in the first place. Um, and, you know, then, um, you know, so I filmed over three years and, um, as we saw the footage coming back, the story definitely unfolded about, um, I always wanted it to be in the voice or through the eyes of a public defender. Um, you know, one thing that I always assumed that I would interview judges and prosecutors, um, but the prosecutors all said no. So I thought, well, um, if I can't interview them, then, you know, first it was really disappointing. I mean, I was trying, trying, trying. And then I thought, you know, this could just be through the eyes of a public defender and I don't need to demonize anybody. So I tried really hard to give the prosecutors their best shot, you know, like to um, not shoot them in an unflattering way. Um, because I don't think, my, my belief is not that a prosecutor is evil. It's that the system is flawed and stacked against one side. So in the end, I thought, I don't, I, I thought, you know, some people I think would like to hear from the prosecutors, but I thought I don't really need them for the story I'm interested in. The cases were, you know, I think in some ways we got lucky, but um, which, you know, there's always, you need a little documentary film luck. Um, uh, but um, I asked Brandy and Travis to think about what cases they thought might be good ones to shoot. Um, and by good, it meant that there was a chance of going to trial, so we could have a chance of seeing a trial. 95% of cases plead, so there are very few trials in the first place to ever show, um, but also where the participants would be willing to film, be filmed, and particularly if the participants were out of jail, um, if they had managed to, to be out, because then I could film them with their families. So they recommended a few, and these two just, you know, both their families agreed right away and let us spend time with them, and I think that made all the difference. You know, in a time where the profession of the law has taken a lot of beatings, um, and pretty rightly so, um, when you see the example of a lawyer whose job is to defend the Constitution, 
there's something about that that I think is heartening for people. You know, it is the Sixth Amendment. It is the right to a fair trial. Um, I'm not a person who doesn't believe in punishment. I, I believe in punishment, but you know, and that's why we started the film with Travis saying, "If you're going to take my liberty, you got to do it right. You can't just say, eh. You know, it is the most sacred thing that we have, our freedom, um, and the consequences of being arrested in prison are lifelong. Even if you get out, once you're a convicted felon, you can't vote, you can't live in student, you can't get student loans, you can't live in public housing. Sometimes you can't get a driver's license. Your driver's license is immediately taken away. All the things that would help somebody get out of poverty, but also all the things that we take for granted as just basic, you know, we can move freely without being searched. That is a fundamental, you know, freedom that we take for granted. And that is not the case for 65 million people who are under the supervision of the criminal justice system, whether or not they're incarcerated. So, um, you know, I think it's important. And I think that it's something, whether or not you're in jail or someone you love is in jail, it's something that we should, we should care about. So, um, so I am hopeful.